you're wondering how to make a arcade cabinet like this for yourself, I'm going to take you through the process I went through. Some of the steps. Come here, you. And, uh... Processes I took to, to do this. I'm showing you it is possible. And it works quite slick. And plays lots of different retro arcade games. And it's not too hard to set up. Lots of different ways you can do it. This is just one way. I followed some tutorials which are in the description and the credit really goes to the people that came up with these tutorials and they and they are the ones man it is hard to talk and do this they're the ones that get the credit come here some plans and I'll share those with you. Two sheets of MDF here. Uh, you can probably do it with one and then use any scraps you have. The, the MDF and some glue cost me $100 in Canadian money. Uh, the software, Raspberry Pi and adapter and buttons and joysticks. I'm into it for about $200 Canadian. Depending where you are in the world, uh, that money amount of money can be best for you. I'll share the links with you as we go. So, um, got some measurements. I'm just about to cut a board in half and see how that goes. From this angle, you're only going to see my butt. So let's bring you around. Easy. Whoop. Stay. When did that fall? <laughs> Not going well so far. All right. I'll All right. I'm going handheld for obvious reasons. Um, so I just basically marked out. Um, everything is coming in that's drawn here this is all the tools I've used uh, my first cut was rough just free-handed because I mean that's all you need I was just cutting it in half these cuts you're gonna to want to be more careful on can you use a table saw yes do I have one yes am I by myself yes uh, this stuff is heavy. Like, even with two people, it'd be tough to cut on a table saw. And I already damaged a corner. I dropped it. So, like, for me, this... I'm pretty big, but this is heavy. This one single sheet. Five-eighths. Uh, what do they call it? MDF? Yeah. I mean, there's lots of different stuff. You, you can use plywood that's good on both sides. Uh, K3. There's melamine kind of stuff, but... This was available to me. This is what I'm using. Um, the measurements to me look small. They feel small, but double checking them just, you know, kind of where your hand sits on a counter with the height. You can see this is where the controls will be. I hope 
uh, pretty good curves. I I just used a, a bucket and a, and a pail. So curves. That'll have to be jigsawed out. So I guess that's a tool you don't see here. But um, yeah, I'll give her. So, you know, basic tools you're gonna need. I mean, you, you can hand saw it out if you're, uh, if you're crazy, but uh, yeah, we'll cut it out and then we'll see. Oh yeah, the clamps. I also have it lightly clamped. Just, you know, just a little bit of pressure. Uh, if you clamp, you can put a piece of scrap wood in there if you don't want to mar the surface. But you know, I'm not clamping it that tight. So, uh, and the two pieces are clamped together. So when I cut it, it'll, you know, be an exact pattern, right, for both. So hopefully that was clear. Cut out. Matt, this stuff is dusty. All I can <laughs> recommend is... Do this outside. And I assume it's mostly glue, so probably not too good for your lungs. So don't breathe that dust in. Um, so yeah, the height is, you can't see me, but the height is good. I'm happy with it. Um, so the plan going forward is, um, this is where the, the controls would be, right? Um, the Raspberry Pi that's controlling it is about the size of a pack of cigarettes. So you don't need all this room, but we, we still want to look at the cabinet. So down here and the back going forward is going to be all storage, shelving. Okay, things have changed a bit. Well, from the behind, you can see I have another piece of MDF left over. So I wanted to show you at this point, this is one piece of MDF. I have another scrap that could go here. And, uh, whoop. <laughs> but, uh, that's it. So I, I, I'll, I'll need to tuck into that other one. I want a shelf there. And I want a one there. And that will kind of hold all the electronics. And... Oh, the, the monitor. I'll have a board up here for the monitor. And it'll kind of finish it off. So I mean, I'll need some more. I could use scraps. You could use scraps. But you decide for yourself what you would use. Um, I use pneumatic tools, air tools, so staples. Um, I made a 2 by 4 base. If you can see there. But uh, just to firm up that. It's getting stronger, but it still, still has some wobble in it. But once you get out, uh, it'll need a back panel, and then that'll stiffen right up. I keep forgetting to tell you guys um, and girls, this is two feet, 24 inches. So all the shelves, the base, two, two, 24 inches, 24 inches 24 all 24 24 24 and then you know i just ripped these down on the table saw uh two inches just strips scraps 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 so then you know you can put where you want to right there's gaps here but i'll fill everything in staples fill it all in and then uh should look good should look kind of professional and then you know you, you cut the base square, squares everything up. Put the back on, it'll square up, you know, everything. Easiest way to do it, but, all right. Okay, we're on day two. Uh, a little gloomier today. I know I said more weather's coming. I guess I lied. Um, just gonna start uh, tacking in cleats. For the 
monitor, and this represents our uh, our control panel. So I just have it sitting in here. Um, I just cut out a shape I thought I liked. Uh, this is kind of a scrap piece. Uh, this is my monitor shape. I kind of uh, angled it to uh, so it will have a nice flush fit. And then, I, I mean, I, I just, you know, I just measured up a size. I thought, I think this was uh, 17, but it just, well, it looked good to me. And then uh, pencil behind. So I know where to put my cleats. Again, this stuff is really fragile. I cut a piece already and it uh, broke out on me. So, more scrap. And then, of course. And then I just uh, glue. You don't need much, it'll all squeeze out. Glue. And staples. I'm actually using a combination of, uh, that's probably inch and a quarter and inch and a half. So th these will go through two thicknesses and these will go through the one and just bite into the second. So here I'm using the shorter. You see my mark there. This is going to have to be left handed we'll get one didn't go in my gotta put some pressure on it I'm supporting the back with my right hand decent And that'll just fit. Okay, I'm gonna screw on for the monitor. I mean, it'll have to be obviously cut out for the monitor. I haven't bought the monitor yet. Uh, hoping to get something used. Find something. Uh, I could use one of my monitors. We'll see, but um, I wanna mount this. I already, uh, you can see here, look, screwed the, the uh, control panel down and I'm using these I, I call these cabinet washers finishing washers that and I think it gives it a nice look um, that uh, you would want go in very light or just screw it in by hand and of course pre-drill mock it up to the cleats where I want it. But let me move you guys up with me. Then we'll just uh, right in the corner. We're live. It's not a drill you'd make your living out of. This is just cheap cheap drill to have around the house uh, but good tools are all in my toolbox and my truck this is just a nice weak drill good for this kind of stuff it's not going to overpower it easy to handle you use it so infrequent you never really worry about charging it Again, we're in Canada, so we use the awesome Robertson bit. People in the world are stuck with their rank Phillips. Sorry to say. 
you guys want to see used to strip screws we mock that up At just the lightest touch because I mean this will strip out if you even look at it the wrong way And I'm just putting this up for, uh, well, truth be known, it's still, I don't, still don't have the stiffness in the cabinet I would like. And I don't want to go putting on a big back panel, mostly because it's going to be heavy. So I, I wanted to put that on and then give it the... I may have to put a back panel on. So I'm getting ready to paint. Sanded everything down, just rounded off the corners just a bit. Um, a lot of people use the edge molding here. I don't know. I think I'm going to like the look of this. But you got to sand so you don't see the. Actually, that might need a little more sanding, but so you don't see the saw marks. And then I just filled in all the little staples and imperfections. Didn't, didn't do a perfect job. Just not looking for that, but just so it's not too noticeable. And uh, I'm going to spray it with a gloss black. And uh, just because. And oh. I might need to be a little more diligent sanding, but I think I might go over it once more. But I turn on the air compressor, get my uh, spray gun, just a cheap spray gun. I mean, you could roll it, but uh, next time you look at this, it's probably going to be black. I'll take this off to paint it, but we'll start getting a coat on here, and then I'll let it dry overnight. Okay, a few days have passed since the last video, and it's just been painting. This is four coats of gloss black. Uh, I plan to put some clear on there as well. I mean, you're, you're, I'm sure you're picking up some defects in it. I'm not too terribly concerned. Uh, the plan is to put some uh, decals on here, and... Uh, just to give it some personalization You are watching this in somewhat real time because what I've done is I built a cabinet before I have all the components so uh, The other day my buttons arrived and the controller as If you look on the other video, you'll see it and I'm building this because I have no patience Normally, you'd probably have all your components, put it together, make sure everything's working, you know. So, I got a couple test holes here. First one was one and a quarter. It's the drill bit I have, and it fits too loose. So, I had to go buy one and an eighth, and that fits decent. So, I presume there's a little play there. You might be able to get away with an inch and then kind of red green or waller it out, but uh, yeah, one and an eighth, which isn't a normal, normal size. Not everyone's going to have that. So that's an expense you may have to get into. So th this is my control panel, my control board. Um, I've just did pilot holes based on where I want my buttons. So um, this would be controller two, player two joystick, and then three buttons. So uh, there's tons of button layouts you can go by. You're going to get templates online for this stuff. Um, you just got to look, but this is where you get to customize. This is where you get to do it yourself. 
uh, the spacing here is one and a half inch. That's all I can say. And then this is three quarters of an inch up to down. So one and a half inch. And, and that spacing seemed natural to me. And then uh, I pi just piloted out to make life easier. And I, I just drew everything out to be even. So all, all the buttons all the way across will be even. And uh, well, we'll drill one. This is my first one. You get to. Let's do it. Again, this very low power drill. It's what I want. I have a piece of scrap underneath to uh, prevent blowout. And so I don't go into my table. Nope, oh, that was it. Just that little puck left over. And decent hole there. And decent hole, center of the screen there. It's almost nicer on the back. And our button fits good. It comes with a collar. Oh, of course you're not. It comes with a collar. And I'll quickly, quickly go over the wiring. Again, it breaks us down on, on the, uh, the video I'm following. And I did this while I was watching uh, House of Cards. Not because I was bored. but So, you can see I put like an insulated terminal on the positive and because I'm cheap a non-insulated terminal on the negative and these are daisy chained together they're all hooked I might need a few more but that was, that was a start and then you're just hooking Positive and negative. Now, these are the way, way small terminals. And, man, all I could find, again, where I am, are these normal-sized terminals. So they fit a little loose. A little loose. So just take your pliers and... Uh, I don't know if fingers might even be able to do that. Crimp it. Just squeeze it down a bit more. And then it'll... It should hold and then the reason they're non-insulated and insulated is if somehow they you know when they're in here if they touch you don't short it out i mean this looks like this is a rat's nest this looks daunting but not as bad as you think it's just basically one wire to one connector so you look you know, this would be the one button, or whatever you want. If you want it, one button, player one, wire goes to one SW1. One button, player two, one SW, or sorry, two SW1. And you just follow it along and put it in. I mean, I probably should have spent some more time with cable management, like they all say, but it never happened. And then the, your grounds are just daisy chains, one to the other, one to the other, into the ground. And you just follow it. It's kind of therapeutic. It wasn't that bad at all. One thing I do say is um, your, your, your joysticks, you think, right, you know, the joystick pushes up. And then you think, well, up is up. So you connect it to the up. But no, no. It's, you have to look at the contact. And when I push up on the joystick, it contacts over here. You follow it, and it's out to here. You'll learn that by trial and error. What do they say? Ask me how I know. So, oh, man, these are coming out already. But, uh, yeah, I just, you know, connect it all up. And then it's just uh, a USB wire that goes into the Raspberry Pi or whatever you want. 
this switch, this iPack, mimics a keyboard. So when you push the one button, it's it's thinking it's pushing the control button on a keyboard. Or well, the same thing up, down, left, right. It's, it's pushing the arrow buttons on a keyboard. And all these are connected. It thinks they're keys. So you could use this easily with a PC or whatever you want. The wire comes with the iPack. I didn't know that. And it's, you know, it, it's all pretty simple. So I'm going to flip it over. Um. <clears throat> And you'll see a little careful you don't pinch wires and I'm gonna hook it up in real time down here I got my Raspberry Pi I recommend I followed the video that I first saw so I got the exact Raspberry Pi the guy got in the video mistake get the best Raspberry Pi you can get so any of these USB connectors hooks in, power, um, you want at least a 2 amp, uh, you know, wall wart to power your Raspberry Pi, um, audio, and I don't know if you're going to make it out, but uh, I'm using this guy for my audio and um, those who know these sound great you're gonna want access to a volume because the ROMs they come with different volumes so it's up and down and when this when you're alone at home you're gonna want to crank the volume and then you're gonna want to uh, get it quiet when you have people are you know when you're other, you know we're, we're ready to go with monitor this would be easier to, to do from the back, but for the video, I just, we're doing it up here. So it's just a, it's a you know what, uh, why can't I think of this name? HDMI cable. This is, this is my old monitor. you're deciding to fight me it kind of goes like that I need to get my screwdriver because this is gonna fall down but we'll bring you in here it's a 19 inch monitor again it's 24 inch wide get to the inside whoops so you know it could have taken a bigger monitor um, I'd maybe go to 21 you don't want to get massive monitor because again the bigger the monitor is just gonna stretch out the graphics the graphics don't get better and you know the monitors i think i'm probably gonna get this wrong with 17 19 inch back in the day of course a lot of them were vertical but um you know you can do what you want i, I put it horizontal i actually couldn't figure out how to swap it to a vertical monitor and the old old games are vertical yes but the, the more modern you get in the mid 80s they're more uh horizontal four by three right so it, it, it'll fit that better so the, you, there's always going to be a compromise so if you're really into vertical shooters you, you you could consider a vertical monitor but if you're in a horizontal shooters defender and whatnot then you don't want a horizontal whoa okay i want to screw this in and we'll see it in see it in action going to be a bit of a cut the eagle eye viewers among you will see i did not hook power to my monitor and i didn't want to just say that i wanted to do it on camera i also have for lack of better term this is just a usb extension cable and again it, it goes anywhere so upside down but um the, the idea is hook this up install all the games and never make a change again it'll just run and run and run but in reality you're going to want to make changes. You're going to add games. You're going to take them off. You're going to want to um, 
uh, set games up differently. And, um, you know, you might want to change the controller setup around a bit. And you're going to need to get into the Raspberry Pi. So I, I'm, I got an extension cable here. It's going to go out the back. I mean, if you build your unit with a door, you won't need that. You, 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 don't, you need access to the Raspberry Pi. So that's going to give me access. Okay, I'm going to attempt to do this in real time. Reach back, there's a switch back here. Checking the little pig is on. I hope this comes up if you're on the, on the right angle. Takes a minute or two to boot up. There we go. So doing it with the Raspberry Pi. Um, does it work? Yes, I, I, I have proven it does work. Um, the gentleman I saw, he inspired me to build this. I, I am in, so grateful for him to put up that incredible video. Did he oversell it? Maybe a little bit. But it, it, I mean, it's possible. So, and if he didn't oversell it, I probably wouldn't have made this video. So, I mean, not dissing him at all, but it's not as easy and straightforward as it would seem. Um, the biggest thing is with the Raspberry Pi, it only uses uh, what I understand to be old versions of these old ROMs. And they're not as easy to come by. I mean, you can download a bunch of ROMs that you just, you just Google and see on the uh on the internet and uh, uh half of them will work but not all of them all of them you're gonna have to do a little searching for things like oh something like old arcade roms maybe or old roms os or something like that all right we're, we're up so it's good so i mean the easiest way to do this is she coming up there yeah the easiest way to do this to me, I think would be just use an old PC and then all your ROMs will work. It'll be great. But the, but the, but the thing is with that, as far as I know, it'll boot into windows and then you have to boot it into MAME. Whereas this is just boots right into your, uh, emulator. And from there you just give her. So, uh, you can't see my fingers player two here, but. So you're my player too. So, boom, and then we got ROMs, and I got all these working. So, um, what am I looking for here? Something really old. Hopefully that came up, but and we'll get a little volume on this. I'll reach down. <laughs> Rollatron's a dual stick, so you need to, um, you'll have to tell this ROM you're using this stick, because otherwise it thinks it's a player two stick, and uh, I can go into that, so, coin up, player one, am I looking in the camera, oh, I gotta save this person, and they're gonna save this person. And this is this is almost perfection. Because these are eight-way joysticks, and I got a pause button over here. I think you can see that. And this is my escape button. So it takes me back to uh, the main menu. And it, it works great. Probably need two more buttons one for tab and it'll get you into the, the menus when you're in a game and an enter button i mean but other than that you can just with that usb uh controller uh, the usb extension coil you just, you just plug in a, a keyboard and I, I i've been keeping my keyboard up here above so a little bit of the programming robotron is a two stick game to make it fully immersive you need two sticks now I, I do have a keyboard hooked up here you don't absolutely need it uh, I have a 12 button layout if I had a 14 button layout I wouldn't need a keyboard because uh, you need if you need to access some of the 
game menus, you need two more keys than I have. This button here is my escape, as I may have shown. But there's a button over here that is my pause. And I pause the game, right? Escape will take me out of the game into the menu. Uh, there's another button on the iPad controller, which is tab. And then you can access... I mean, you can, you can play the game with a keyboard as well. I mean, whoop, perfectly fine. So you can do some auto-fire. I mean, Robotron is already auto-fire. But uh, for the guys like me who suck at video games, uh, auto-fire is, is nice to have. And I, I turn it on on games like uh, Time Pilot. So you don't have to sit there and... and uh, button mash you just hold it down and play your game and i don't think it takes much out of the game it just it saves you a little re repetitive strain injury uh and then so i mean this works with, with the joystick because because this joystick is the same keys as up and down so uh dip switches you can get in there you can look at it uh i, I decided to include this programming pit just because it, it wasn't necessary i didn't necessarily find it that easily online it, it, it is out there and i figured it out and I, i'm not that smart but so inputs for this game and you'll see up, up down left right it is up down left right on the keyboard and then stick to Player one is always one, uh, one, and, one and two. So this is my player one. This is my player two. Uh, and then uh, player one, again, it says up, down, left, right, because it's, again, it's a dual joystick. And some games like Smash TV or dual joystick and, and other ones out there, you, you would go in and you put your input in what you want up. So in this case, up is no. Sometimes it takes a minute to do that, but and there it is. Up, up is R or R or D. I don't know why it says D, but it it, it should work, right? We'll, we'll back out of the game so you can put escape here or escape here again. They're the same key and no. I did something wrong <laughs> already. We'll pause it. And uh, input. Oh, so your other your other button would be an, an enter button. So tab and enter I need for this keyboard. Otherwise, I wouldn't need the keyboard. So up, I want to go and input this as I wonder if I might have uh, pushed it slightly to the right and it triggered it as both. It, it, it's possible. Uh, one thing with the joysticks, I'll, I'll mention at this point, it doesn't have to do with this, but uh, the joysticks I bought and the most that are out there, they can go four-way or eight-way. And it's just a gate that you turn. And I recommend uh, you, you need, and maybe I did cover this already, but... You need to, it's much easier to play the old games like Donkey Kong and Dig Dug with a four-way joystick. It, it, it's actually really tough to play with an eight-way joystick. And all it does is, it, it, there's a gate in there and it won't let you go diagonal. And because the diagonal confuses it and it, it, nothing will happen. But, I mean, if you make it, you'll find out for yourself. But just experiment with that gate and, and, and changing it from four-way to eight-way. Or any way to four way. We'll back out of this again. Let's try. I'm gonna have to edit this video. Oh yeah, no, it's it's working. Shooting up. Seems to be working good. I will talk a little about about the case itself. You're probably wondering about these graphics, and I, I didn't specifically do a how-to on this because it, it, this is customization, and you do it what you want. Uh, these are just 
JPEGs I found online and I just sent them out to a online photo processing, uh, any company you want. And for uh, several cents, they will print out uh, a photo. So these are just regular, what is it, three by five photos. The big ones, the, there's bigger ones like this would be an eight by nine photo. And then they're, they're a little more expensive. And I just use crafting product uh, mod podge kind of glue stuck them on clear coated over it now i messed up my clear coat I, I was trying to go for a textured finish and i won't tell you what i did because it's embarrassing but it, it came up all milky and disgusting and it looks dirty and i'm gonna have to fix it so but yeah do, do what you want to to put your stickers and, and we just personalize it the way we want to and we have it's just some retro stickers there you can see frogger nintendo donkey kong i put a little coin here i don't know if i like it or not but and there's stickers all over and it just clear coated over and it adds a little personalization paint it how you want um now as far as changes the the monitor you can see how it's recessed and i i mean for, for me it's good if you're a little shorter I did, what I didn't pick up is modern day monitors are designed to be looking down on. Because I mean, when you're at your desk, you're always higher than your monitor. And the viewing angle is set up that way. So you kind of have to be higher to go, let's, let's look at this monitor. So I recommend put your monitor a little more horizontal. And I'll probably do that in the future. And again, um, I have no way to access my uh, uh raspberry pi so i have so i've got to take my monitor out and then i got to take this out and i i should have done this in reverse so all i got to do is take this out or a couple screws hinges up access the pie and go down now at this point you may not have a reason to but yeah it, it probably shouldn't have been that way and again if it was me even just a couple inches wider with two player might have been nice. Now I asked everyone who's tried it, and they say it's it's fine. Like when we play in two player, you're not bumping into each other. I'm a big guy. You get two, you know, big guys like me playing this. It, it might be a little bit tight, but the, with with the 24 inch form factor, uh, it's really efficient for wood. You don't get a lot of scraps, and of course you can rip down a four by eight sheet, and, and it, it just works. So, future cabinet, you would consider that, but I mean, the 24 inches definitely works, and there's no complaints with people that have used it. I mean, maybe they're just being polite, but uh, something I noticed, and I mean, that's about it. I mean, the rest of it I think I covered, but uh, I suppose if you do have anything else to add, add the comments, and, and I'll try to update when I can. And uh, as always... Thanks for watching.